Welcome back to YouTube. We have Amal again from In-Depth Tech Reviews. And in today's video, I'm going to share with you 30 powerful iOS 15 tips, tricks, and hidden features. So without further ado, let's jump in. Tip number one is under settings, general, and scroll all the way down. You will see the reset iPhone option has been renamed to transfer or reset iPhone. And that's for a reason, because when you go inside, you will see a new feature called the prepare for new iPhone. The prepare for new iPhone is a new feature in iOS 15 that will allow you to back up your current device to the cloud, even if you don't have enough storage in your iCloud. And that's for the purpose to transfer this data from your old iPhone to the new one. This data will be saved temporarily on Apple servers. And once the transfer process is successful, it will be removed. So let's tap on get started to see how it works. It will first explain that your apps and data will be uploaded to the cloud then once you get your new iphone all you need to do is to turn on the device make it close to the current one to start the sign-in process and restore your data back once the transfer is successful it will start identifying your current iphone value to give you an idea about how much money you can get if you trade in your current iphone once you head done on this screen it will automatically start an icloud backup in the background and if you want to confirm go to your icloud account and then go to icloud backup and you will see a backup automatically started right here. By this, your data is ready to be transferred over, but you will continue the instructions on the new iPhone. Tip number two is in the music recognition. So if you have Shazam music recognition added to your control center, now when you tap and hold on the tile, you will get the history of recognized songs. Not only this, but you can delete any of them from your history if you want. And when you tap on any of them, it will take you right away to the music discovery app. Tip number three, the ability to quickly remove offloaded apps from your home screen. Here I have the Facebook app already offloaded and that's why I have the download icon next to it. Now when I tap and hold on the app icon, I will get a new shortcut called remove app, which wasn't the case in iOS 14. Previously, to remove offloaded apps, the only way is to tap and hold on the home screen and then use the minus button. Tip number four is the ability to reorder your home screen pages. All you need to do is to tap and hold on an empty spot, then tap the pagination dots. You will see all the pages you have. Just use the drag and the drop feature to reorder them the way you want like this. And if you want to replace your default home screen page with a different one, all you need to do is to make sure it's located in the first spot and then tap on done. That will be the page you will see every time you swipe up. Tip number five is the ability to add multiple instances of the same app to your home screen. So for example, here I have YouTube already available and I can drag and drop it back again to my home screen and they show next to each other. Tip number six is related to iOS 15 focus mode. So let's say you have a couple of pages hidden from your home screen. So I'm gonna choose those two and then tap on done. After that, I'm gonna go to settings and then focus and go inside any of the modes I have. I will choose do not disturb for now. And here I can choose what home screen pages to show up while having this mode turned on. So I'm gonna choose that same two hidden pages that I removed before and then tap on done. Then go back. I have that do not disturb mode already activated. And as you see, now I have the same hidden pages showing up only while having do not disturb activated. And once I turn off my focus mode like this, the two pages will be hidden back again and I will get the rest of the pages like normal. Tip number seven, the time picker of iOS 13 is back again with iOS 15. So let me show you what I mean. So for example, let's say you are trying to set an alarm. Now you can pick the time using the same wheel design as iOS 13, which is something Apple took off with iOS 14. Not only this, but you can also tap on the numbers to get the keypad, which is similar to iOS 14. So now you have both designs in one place. Tip number eight is the ability to mirror your iPhone screen to any Mac running macOS Monterey. Unfortunately, I don't have one at the moment to show you how it works, but it should appear in the list and you can choose it as you normally would with any other device. Tip number nine, there is a new remote for your Apple TV in iOS 15. First, you will see some new buttons like the power, mute and the channel and also the menu button is no longer using text but it has a back arrow instead but the trick is if you have the apple tv remote up and running on your phone you can use the volume rockers to control the volume on your tv and also press and hold on the power button to control your apple tv using siri tip number 10 the text size tool can now adjust the size for individual apps or all apps so for example i'm going to open app store pull down the control center tap on text size 
Here I have a switch to choose between all apps or app store only because this is the one currently active on my phone. So if I turned the switch to app store only and then change the text size like this, when I go back to the app store, everything is now bigger, but there is no impact on the rest of the apps and my home screen. You can also do the same for your home screen without impacting your apps. So for example, if your phone is on the home screen, open the text size tool one more time and you will see home screen only, tap on it and change the size, go back and everything is now bigger. But when you open any app, everything will be normal. And by the way, it will save your preference. So when you go back to the app store, you still have everything bigger but you can simply go back again to the tool to return back to the default size if you want. Tip number 11, the ability to drag and drop items between apps. So for example, I'm gonna open photos and select multiple by doing this. Then I will go back to the home screen, open the notes app, create a new note and drop everything right here. After a few seconds, all the photos I dropped are showing in my note. You can use it with whatever app you want. So for example, you can take the same photo again and then go to your home screen and open, let's say, the mail app and start a new message and drop everything right here. And by the way, it also works in a spotlight. So when you search for anything, you can simply drag and drop as I showed you earlier. Or you can use it to add more apps to your home screen. For example, I want to have the TV app on my home screen, so I'm going to search for it and then drag and drop it like this. Tip number 12 is the ability to change the playback speed in the TV app. So let's say I'm going to play this episode. When I tap on the ellipses icon, I will get an option called playback speed. Tapping on it will reveal these options. And it also works with the video files you upload it to your phone manually, like this one for example, you will still get the same option. Tip number 13, when you drag your finger over text to move the cursor, you will see the text magnifier is back again. Number 14, when you go to settings, then general, keyboard, and then try to add a new language, now you have the option to search. Number 15, the magnifier is now a standalone app that you can access from your home screen, not only from the control center like before, plus it got a couple of new features. The first one is the ability to switch cameras. You can choose back or front. The second one is the ability to measure distance between you and people around you. You will see a new icon right here. Tapping on it will take you to the back camera and the phone will try to detect people as it says here. Once it detects someone, it will tell you how far you are from that person. You can also adjust some settings for this feature by tapping on the settings icon and then go to people detection. Here you can choose between meters or feet. You can also choose the minimum threshold and get a feedback if the threshold has been exceeded, like a sound feedback, speech, or haptics. And as you would expect, this feature is meant to be used because of the pandemic, so you need to keep at least two meters from the people around you, and this one will help you do this. Number 16, the ability to zoom in and out in quick take videos. So when you tap and hold to take a video while in the photo tab, now you can zoom in and out by dragging your finger like this. Number 17, the camera QR code scanner got a new interface that moves with the object like this. Number 18, the files app can now group your files automatically. Just tap the three dots at the top right corner, then tap on use groups. By default, it will group your files based on the kind, but you can change this as well. Just tap the three dots again and you will find a new drop down menu called group by. Here you will see three different options, either group by kind, date or size. Number 19 is the ability to access a spotlight search from the lock screen, but it will only give you generic results from the web. But once you unlock, all the results on your phone will appear. To activate this feature, you need to go to settings, face ID and passcode, enter your passcode, then scroll down until you find something called today view and search. Once you turn on the switch, it will work. Number 20 is the ability to delete apps from a spotlight search. When you tap and hold, you will see delete app. Number 21, the ability to search photos and share them from the spotlight search. So here I have some results and when I tap on the photo, I have the share button at the bottom left corner. Number 22, if you are subscribed to any iCloud plan starting from the 50 GB, now you can create random emails and use them to sign up for third-party websites 
all newsletters without revealing your real email. To use the feature, make sure you are subscribed to iCloud and then head over to settings, tap on your name and then go to iCloud and you will find a new option here called hide my email. Tap on it and the first option you get is create new address. When you tap on it, it will load for a few seconds and then it will create a random iCloud email for you to use with third party websites. From here, you can add a label and an optional note to remember what is it for. You can also tap on use different address if you want to regenerate an easier one like this. You can endlessly tap on use different address and it will keep regenerating. Once you are happy with the choice, give it a label. So I'm going to call this one newsletter and I'm going to keep the note empty and then tap on next. Now the email address has been created when I tap on done. Now I can see it in the list. By this, you can take the email address and sign up for the third party website. And then all the messages sent to this email can be forwarded to your primary Apple ID or any other alternative email you have set up in your account. And here I have more than one email to choose from. Once you are happy with the choice, tap on done and you are good to go. Later on, if you started to receive spam emails from the third party website, you can deactivate this email by tapping on it and you will see an option here called deactivate email address. When you do this, nobody can send you emails. But when you deactivate an email, it will not be deleted entirely. However, it will appear under a list called inactive addresses. From here, you can see the inactive ones. And when you go inside, you will be able to delete the address entirely if you want or reactivate it back again. Number 23, the ability to access live text anywhere on your iPhone and paste text from your camera. As an example, I will open the notes app and then tap and hold on the text field. I will get the live text icon here in the choices. Tapping on it will open the camera at the bottom half of the screen. Here I have a piece of paper with some text on it. So I'm going to put it in front of the camera like this. And as you see here, I'm getting the text recognized and added to my note immediately. Once I'm happy with the text written, I can tap on the insert button and I'm done. Number 24, copy text from images in the photos app. So here I have a screenshot for an article. All I need to do is to tap and hold and make my selection. And by the way, it works with handwritten text and you can also translate text on the fly like this. Number 25, identify objects in your photos using iOS 15 visual lookup. So for example, here I have a flower and all I need to do is to swipe up and here I have the lookup feature activated. Once I tap on it, it will tell me the name of the flower and also give me similar images. It can work with pets. So here is a photo of a dog. And when I tap on lookup, it will tell me the breed name. Here is another photo of a landmark. And when I swipe up and tap on lookup, it will tell you the name. And it says here Albert Memorial, which is correct. And you can also use it to identify books. Number 26. Siri can now share anything on the screen. So let me show you how it works. Send this. Who do you want to send it to? Test account. Ready to send it? Yes. Okay, it's sent. This feature works with pretty much each and every app like Safari, for example. Send this. Who do you want to send it to? Test account. Ready to send it? It can also work in Apple Maps to share locations, Apple Music, News, podcasts, TV, and more. And in case it cannot share the actual item, it will take a screenshot instead. So let me show you this. Send this. I can only send screenshots from here. Who do you want to send it to? Test account. Ready to send it? So you got the idea. Number 27. Now you can add any song from Apple Music to your memories. So for example, when you open the memory and then tap on it again, you will have the music icon over here. When you tap on it, it will take you to this page. Here you have that plus sign with the music icon. Tapping on it will open Apple Music so you can search for the song you want or you can simply choose from the songs recommended for you. Number 28, when you open a photo of people and then swipe up to access the info pane, now you will see a circle representing each person in the photo. If this person is already identified in your gallery, tapping on the circle will give you some options. The first one is to view all photos of that person, review confirmed photos to make sure that the recognition is correct. The third one is to feature list, so it will not appear that much in your memories. 
And finally, you can say, this is not Ahmed, which is me, and you can put another name. And if the person is not recognized, you will see a small question mark next to the circle. Tapping on it will give you the option to tag with name, so the Photos app will know who's that person. And you still can jump to all photos or feature lists in your memories. Number 29. There is a new feature in iOS 15 called the Scheduled Summary that will combine all your notifications and send them to you in batches based on a frequency that you set yourself under settings. So let me show you how it works. The feature is located under settings, notifications, and then a scheduled summary. From here, you can turn the feature on or off and add up to 12 summaries per day. Each summary will have its own time that you can change using the time picker. You can delete any by tapping on the minus sign and then tap on delete. And once you have an empty spot, you will get the plus sign here at the bottom. Tapping on it will automatically add a new summary for you like this. When you scroll down, you will see the full list of apps you have on your phone. So you can choose which one to include in your summary. The apps will be ordered based on the daily notification average, or you can use the alphabetical order if you want. By this, you will only get notifications from these apps based on the schedule above. Finally, you will see an option here called show next summary this one will show the next summary in the notification center before the scheduled time and here is how the notification summary will look like in your notification center so here i have the evening summary when i tap on it it will expand all the notifications and also i have the upcoming summary that i can see as well number 30 with ios 15 the find my feature can now track your phone even if it's powered off and when you try to power off your phone like this you will see a small hint says iPhone findable after power off. When you tap on it, you will get more information about the feature. You also have the ability to temporarily turn off finding if you want. So that's pretty much it for today. I shared with you 30 powerful iOS 15 tips, tricks, and hidden features, and there are a lot more to come. So I hope you like my video, and if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.